If you're ever doing speeches or anything, you're trying to anything that involves having a time limit, a good way to practice is called time timer, and literally the the time disappears, so you don't have to wonder where you're at, it's like last time. So, um, I'm James Schleicher. Um, I'm president and founder of Team IBB. IBB stands for I've Been Burned. Um, what our story is is unfortunately uh, we were um, we got taken advantage of in business and in our industry, our families did. And that's been our battle cry um, as to why we're in business and why we get up and fight the good fight, so to speak. Um, big Batman nerd, so I say we're the, the vigilante of business. Um, so that's, that's kind of our background, um, why we do what we do. Uh, but I'd like to talk more specifically to, um, let me close this. talk more specifically to what you want to talk about. So um, is there any volunteers that want to s just talk about why they chose this career? Any volunteers? Got to be one of you. So why did you pick this? Sounded cool? What, what was cool about it? What, what was something you liked about it? What's that? The name? Okay, what, was, what, na what name are we under? Business. Business? Okay. Right now, is there a lot of money to be made as an entrepreneur and in business? Is that something that, it, that you are very aware of if, hey, I could, I could make millions of dollars running my own business? Is that something that, you, that you've heard? Yeah? Okay. So when you start your business, what's your name? Brienne? Brielle. Brielle. Okay, so Brielle, you're going to start a business today. Okay? Pop quiz. What is Brielle's salary? How much money does she make day one of her business? Zero. Zero. Yes. Thank you, sir. What's your name? Alan. Alan? So thank you. Give it up for Alan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> bonus, bonus, <laughs> bonus credit. If I give you college credit for that, I would. So, do business owners and entrepreneurs make money because they're business owners and entrepreneurs? Is it just like, hey, I'm a business owner, give me money? Is that how, like, how, how does it work? So if she starts, so what's, what's something that you love to do that we could wave a magic wand that that would be your business? What's that, a vet? Okay, so are you gonna be a vet? Awesome, all right. So she's gonna be a vet. Another thing, dentists, doctors, vets. I have a client that he's an optometrist, so he's an eye doctor. It's the most stressful thing on the planet when you're trying to start your own business in those fields because if she's a vet, what is she the expert at? What is she trained to do? Help animals, right? Right? And that's what you love to do. If she is running her own veterinarian business, does she also have to worry about who's going to pay the electric? What electric company am I going to use? Are you going to need a staff? Are you going to need people to help you? You need someone to answer the phones while you're operating on an animal, right? So she's got to hire people, and if they don't do their job, what does she have to do? Fire them. OK. Does that sound like a lot of fun? No? So. Wet. This is perfect, perfect, perfect. Understand that there's certain career paths that you don't maybe necessarily want to be a business owner, but you're forced to. Does that make sense? So what are, what are some things that she can do now to prepare to be a veterinarian and be a great business owner? What do business owners need to succeed? Did you raise your hand? Was that a raised hand, sort of? Money. Money? Okay, what's your name? Allison. Allison. Give it up for Allison. <laughs> yeah. Also, college credit if I give it to you, could give it to you. Um, so money, all right? Money does not buy you happiness. So they all, I know a lot of people making lots of money, and they are miserable. Because the only thing about money 
is that you get, you get one dollar, and now you want two. You get two dollars, now you want ten. You get ten, now you Money doesn't stop. There's just more. Does that make sense? There's certain things in life like, well, I have three cars. I guess now I got to get four. And I had two houses. Now I need three. So the this is and the that's, the stuff of life. The stuff of life will not make you happy. However, following your dream, no matter what anybody says, and being a veterinarian, that will make you happy, right? Will the, so will there be people who want to invest money in her business? Anybody, anybody in here love animals? OK? So question. People that love animals. Have you ever heard of Target Market? OK, Target Market is business, business cliche words. What it means is, who is your perfect client? So you, her perfect client is the animals, right? But can the, so the, do the animals have money? No. no. OK. Owners. The owners of the animals. So the people that raise their hand, are they, are they the people that you should talk to about helping you out with your business and, and talk to you about bringing their animals? Or the people that don't love animals and don't have animals, should you spend your time and money talking to them? The people that have animals. People that have animals. The people that don't have animals, they're not bad people, right? They're fine. Right? And maybe one day, if you treat them right and you're good to them, when they get an animal, they'll bring it to you, right? So money, yes. I believe it's right about 96% of businesses fail within five years. OK, so how old are you now? 13. So in five years, how old will you be? 18, OK? You're 18, you had all these dreams, and you're out of business. And when you run out of money, you ever heard of bankruptcy? So it's not the end. Most successful entrepreneurs and business owners, have they failed before, or is it like they're just successful their first time around? Most of them fail many times. Kit Marlowe, who's a local guy, one of the absolute best people. Um, I can't remember the name of his book, but uh, he's got a great book on if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a business owner. But I remember him telling his story. I think it was 19 years. Don't quote me on that. It was about 19 years that he failed and failed and failed and failed and scraped and clawed and scraped and clawed and failed and failed and failed and failed. And, failed. and then finally, it worked. OK? So money's not the answer, but without it, you're out of business. Doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter if you're the best vet the world has ever seen. It doesn't matter if all your customers are coming that we love you, you're the best. But uh, I'll, I'll pay you next month. You know, like, hey, can you just work on my dog for free? And you want to, right? Because you love people, you love animals, and you're a good person, right? Like, I can't say no to you, right? You need money to stay in business but also for people to pay you money you need you need to be you need to become the expert so in school is there a certain subject that you like more than, than others okay jim someone say jim all right that was my favorite jim and lunch i was the i was an expert in lunch all right expert <laughs> nobody could eat better than me so there is <laughs> so you want to and I'm, I'm not picking on you. I'm just, I'm just trying to make this real for all of you. Right now, your actions, how, how you treat each other, how you treat your teachers, how you treat your administration, how you treat your neighbors, how you treat, this is Dave, by the way, in the back. He's a man. So say hi to Dave. So, how you treat Dave and I, if you treat us good, do you think we will help you? If you treat, it, you treat us good and you're respectful, right? And you don't have excuses. So it's one thing to do your homework. I, was, I had more wrong answers on my homework than I had right answers. But did I finish it? Yeah. My nickname in high school was Dumb Pants. I was not your ideal student. 
However, my teachers went out of their way for me. My coaches went out of their way for me. My, my friends and classmates went out of their way for me because I didn't make excuses. I got the work done. It really sucked when it was done, and I was still wrong most of the time. Okay, But if you tie your schoolwork to something greater and something that you're more passionate about than just science or just English or just social studies, whatever, you're, whatever it is. So what's your favorite subject? Math. Math. What is your least favorite subject? English, English arts? OK. Whose favorite subject is English arts? <laughs> English arts, who's their favorite? Who, who, that was my favorite, was English. Who, who, who uh, in this room, like, English is their, their favorite? Right there, um, you, sir. Your name? Jeremiah. So Jeremiah, so both of you, English experts. Knows you. So Jeremiah is called social capital. So money is financial capital. People are social capital. And social capital is eventually how you have more financial capital than what you know what to do with. Okay? So Jeremiah is great at English. You don't like English. Is that okay? But it's not okay not to turn in your homework. It's not okay to make excuses, right? Could he help you? So you're gonna be like, I don't know what this is going. I don't know what's going on with this. And Jeremiah's like, I love this stuff. Do you do you need help in math sometimes? Yes. Math and English, words and numbers. All right, they're two completely different things, right? And some of us are. It's more gifted in each area. So. This is how business works. I have a CPA that sends me business, and I send him business. I have an attorney that sends me business. And so I have other business owners. We send each other business because what I'm good at, they're terrible at. And what I'm terrible at, they're great at. Does that make sense? So the two of you, is there any excuse as to why you can't at least have, it's, it's not about you becoming the, the math genius of the world. It's about you getting some help and giving some help. And building social capital, building a, that's how businesses thrive. Does that make sense? So you have to make the mundane fun. Does everybody know what mundane is? Boring. Like so, so, so like you get into English class, you're like, boring. Right? You don't like, it's not because you want to, but just kind of that's how you're net, you get into math, boring. Right? Make the mundane things, make the boring things fun. And make the fun things more fun. So if you're tying English to being a veterinarian, and when you have to write a paper, and you make it about animals, and you make it about how you would treat an animal if they were, if they were injured, and you, go, you get online, and you watch YouTube, and you Google everything about being a veterinarian, <coughs> and, you, and, you, and you put that into your English studies, and you have the Time out. If you have the conversation with your teacher, I say, hey, do your teachers know that it's not their favorite? You, you, like the, your teachers know that English is not your, your favorite subject, right? Whether you said it, it's either by what you said and how you act in class, or by when you turn in the work, it's just, they're talking to your math teacher, and they're like, she's awesome at math. Uh, and they're like, oh, English, I feel like she hates me. I feel like she doesn't want to be there, right? So if you can tie the classes you don't like to something that you love? Will it be easier? And will you make that thing that used to struggle, used to be a struggle, will it, will it be fun? And will you look forward to it if you're tying in things that you love? Yes or no? If all you had to do is write about being a vet and how you would help animals, could you write? Are you going to be able to do that every time? But it's OK. And you got your social capital to help each other succeed. That's what, that's what leaders do. That's what bi true business owners do. They help their fellow people succeed and get better. All right? Any other questions or anything? Any other, other reasons as to why, why you're here or anything that, you, that we've talked about that you had questions on? All right. Can she start her business? 
Will she be successful? She focuses on the things we talked about. Okay. Will you bring her your animals to her? All right. I don't have an animal right now. We had to, unfortunately we had to put our dog down at the beginning of this year. Um, but uh, sign me up. I'll, I'll be your first customer. Is that cool? All right. So um, I'm going to just kind of touch on a couple of things. So first off, to be a business owner in this day and age with the internet, with YouTube, with everything, do you have to be 30 years old to start a business? Or could you start your business right now, right? There's people younger than you making millions of dollars, right? OK? So first off, there's no age requirement to be in business, OK? But circling back to your target market, if, you're, if you have a YouTube channel, or you're on Instagram, or whatever, you, whatever is cool now, I don't even know, all right? What you're putting out there, that is, first off, that's a reflection of you. So could you post something to the internet that is negative, not thought out, and is just, just it's a bad post. It's just something, you just, you didn't really think about it, and you just kind of, you let your emotions get in, you run wild, and you just posted something. Does that hurt your opportunity to be a veterinarian? And does that hurt your business? Okay. Raise your hand. Yes or no? Yeah. Hurt you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because your business is you. Ever, ever heard of the term? What's your brand? Have a brand. Okay. So that swoosh on Jeremiah's hoodie. Do I have to? I don't have to see words or letters to know that that's Nike, right? That's branding. So right now. More in like the Willoughby area, where our, where our business is located. People see IBB, and they, oh, that's James and his team. OK? So branding, that is, when you post anything to the internet, you are saying, this is my brand. It's great. I'm a positive person. I don't make excuses, right? I help others. I love others. Or when you post, you're saying, you are not terrible people, right? But you might have a terrible post. And then people assume what? So you're terrible, like, what? I would never send my animal to her. Why would she say that? Why would she post, right? And you didn't mean it. You didn't mean, you just, you just every, do we all have our moments? OK? Ain't, when you are angry, have you ever had a positive outcome? When you're, like, have you ever been angry, posted something, angry and said something to someone, especially the people that you love, like whether it might be siblings, uh, friend, like good, good friends, teachers, people that you love and love you, and they're, you're just you're angry, and you take them for granted, and you blah. Yeah. You've done that? Have you ever been angry and said or done something that worked out great? So you can, not really, right? So rule one, never make a decision when you're angry. Never act when you're angry. Everybody, everybody heard of Abraham Lincoln? Kind of a smart dude. When he was angry, he would take out a piece of paper, pen, or quill pen, or a little feather pen, whatever they used back in the day. And he would write what he was angry about to that person. Okay, so he'd write them a letter. What he, why he was angry? What he was angry about? By writing it, was he was he getting the anger out? Yeah. So if so, if you're angry about something, and you just write it all out, like oh, well that's why I feel that way. I feel better now. Or oh hey, and now I get it off my chest. Would he then send it to them? No. So he got his anger out. But he didn't ruin his reputation. He didn't ruin his opportunities. Right? Is it OK to be mad and angry? Are there things that are going to make you mad and angry? Is it OK? It's OK to be that way. It's not OK to act on it. Does that make sense? So issue might have, so if you're like, OK, I'm going to do, I'm just going to write an angry text. So I'm, I'm mad at Susie, and I'm going to text her. I'm going to just, I'm going to just do the act of texting and then not send it. Problem is, 
can you accidentally send a text very easily? And like, oh, I didn't mean to send that. OK? Or you can, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to type up this post, but I won't, I won't tweet it. I won't post it or whatever, right? And then is it real easy just to accidentally your, your finger scrolls across your phone and poof, right? Piece of paper, pen, write it out, get it out of your system, tear it up, throw it away. Okay? Your challenge is also your opportunity. So what I'm talking about, you can literally do anything because of the internet. You can literally be a millionaire overnight because of YouTube and other social media platforms. But more people lose respect lose clients, lose help, lose opportunity, because they're, ta they're taking that platform and they're, they're posting the wrong things. Does that make sense? My gift is that I, don't, I didn't have to deal with social media when I was your age. OK? I didn't have to worry about that. Social media didn't follow me home. Social media didn't, wasn't there on the weekends. OK? So. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. It's going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to have to do is do the right thing. The, hard, the right thing is always the hardest thing to do. But if you want to be a business owner, you want to be an entrepreneur, you want a ball out of control, it's one, can you make a ton of money and run out? Can you spend all your money? Is it possible? Yes. Do you hear stories of people making millions and going bankrupt? People that they get all the money in the world and then they manage to spend it. Five houses, 27 cars, right? $3,000 dinners. You cannot get, you can always get money back. It is very hard to get your reputation back. It's very hard to get your brand back. Does that make sense? And your brand is you and your ex. Got a party going on. All right, cool. This is our business dance. All right, cool. Um, so uh, the last thing I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take to you, sir. If you could come up here, and then you miss. If you could come up here, what's your name? Uh, my name is Elio. Elio, I'm James. How you doing? Brendan, I'm James. Come on up. Running out of paper, so we're gonna so person versus the paper again. T Ten minutes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna talk real slow. Person. First, the paper. We're going to stand up here for 10 minutes. Is that OK? I'm kidding. OK, all right. So thank you. Thank you. Um, the, so this is, has anybody heard of like a resume? Heard of it? OK, so a resume basically, it's your list of uh, classes you took, jobs you had. Just if you apply for a job, someone's going to say, well, let me see your resume. OK? So your resume, and also too, when you apply for a job, are they going to check your social media? I know, personally, I know multiple people that did not get jobs, their dream job, because of a post they made five years ago. That stuff is there forever. Social media speaks more than your resume. Yes. Your social media pretty much is your resume at this point. OK? Does that make sense? So. A lot of times, people will say, well, I'm not going to start my business. I'm not going to be a veterinarian until I update my resume, until I update my LinkedIn profile, until I update my social media profiles, right? So by me saying, well, I got to do this first before I can be happy, or I got to do this first before I can follow my dream, and I'm, I'm giving you what I sounds to myself like reasons, but what are reasons to other people? Excuses? Somebody say excuses? So if I'm giving you all the reasons why I am late, I'm giving you all the reasons why I didn't do my homework, I'm giving you all the reasons why I didn't get the job done, they might sound great to me, but what do they sound like to you? Excuses. James makes excuses for the things he's supposed to do. So do not let yourself hide behind your social media. Hide behind your resume. Um, you're going to eventually you get your high school diploma, right? 
If you go to college, what do you get? Degree? So do you need a diploma or a degree to do great things and to start a business? No. Do you need a degree or a diploma to be positive on social media? No. OK. So also, too, who, who, of you wants, who of you wants to be the boss? The manager. All right? I won't be the boss. First off, how much is the boss's salary when they start? Maybe negative. So if you had it, so we're talking about you need money to open up. So if she's going to open her own veterinary clinic, she might need to take out a five hundred thousand dollar loan. So congratulations, you're the boss. You make negative five hundred thousand dollars. Keep it up. Right. So be careful. Business success is not about the position you have. It's about things you do, who you are. So we have certification, we have job title, business cards, right? When I have a business card, then, then I'll talk to you about my business. Okay, people hide behind pieces of paper, so I'm gonna give this to you. Thank you for standing up here so long. <laughs> All right, so who's more powerful, them or the piece of paper in their hand? Their degree, diploma, certification, social media. Who's more powerful? Okay, do me a favor. I'm gonna count to three. I need you to just rip it in half and prove prove everybody right. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Thank you so much. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, sorry. And always recycle. Thank you. Thank you. This is the recycle bin right here? All right, cool. Always recycle. Thank you. Sorry, I had you standing up there so long. Um, so there's no age requirement to start a business. There's no age requirement to do the right thing. You are always more powerful than the piece of paper. Circling back to my nickname in high school is Dumb Pants. I am end of this. End of this year, I'm getting another certification. Because I, I took that, and I said, I will prove you wrong. I will show you how smart I am. Okay? And when it's something that you're focused on that you love, it's way easier to study. Okay? I'm going to spend the whole month of December studying. I can't wait. But I'm going to have more letters next to my name than are in my, so I have James Schleicher's 15 letters. I'm going to have 16 letters next to my name. Showing that how dumb I am. Okay? So, okay, so so the certifications. So if you go to the doctor, so it'll be like Joe Smith MD. Or if you have like a like a prof, like a professor in college, will be Susie Smith PhD. Okay, so whatever industry or expertise or business you're in, so a veterinarian, is she gonna get, have to be a doctor, right? So she's going to have letters next to her name, proving that she knows what she's talking about. So whatever industry you get in, whatever business you're in, accumulate those letters next to your name. Because that, what that does, if someone look, five minutes, thank you, sir. If someone says, has never met me, and they want to do business with me, and they're like, I don't know, do you know if I know what I'm talking about? I'm here right now. You just met me. Do I know what I'm talking about? Maybe, right? But then I have different, certific different letters next to my name proving that I'm the expert at what I do. And also, too, I'm top 6% in the world at what I do. This is my fifth year at that level. You have more confidence in doing business with me then, right? It doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I, for sure, am the right fit for you. but if your name is followed by, are you going to go, are you going to take your animal to her if she's not really a doctor? Say, hey, I got a, got a scalpel, got some bandages, bring your animals in, you know, right? You got to know what you're talking about. What you are made fun of for now, you will be praised for forever. Take what people throw at you. Take the things, the negative things, and turn them into positive. For the first five years of my business, people made fun of me for running my business how I saw it, should, how it should be. Now I have people all across the country calling me, how did you do it? What are you doing? And my, what's my answer to them? 
I'm doing the same exact thing you made fun of me for. And people most often will make fun of you for doing the right thing and for being a leader and for being the business owner of your life. So please, if you remember anything, take care of each other, but understand doing the right thing is always the hardest thing, but it's the only thing that matters. All right? Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up for yourselves. All right. <laughs>